Hello everyone, this is Mr. Lipchick and our topic of discussion today uh, are the essential features of the state. This is really the foundation of uh, our class. Our class is American government. Uh, before we can understand government and its purpose, we have to understand what a state is. Okay, the word state has two meanings. Here's the first meaning. A political community that occupies a definite territory and has an organized government which can make and enforce laws without the approval from any higher authority. Okay, uh, Germany would be an example of a state when the word is used in this sense. Okay. Second meaning of the word state the main political units within the United States, such as Pennsylvania, Ohio, and Indiana. These political units, while they pass many of their own laws, are subject to the laws of the federal government. Throughout our nation's history, the states have lost power to the federal government. Events such as the Civil War and the Great Depression allowed the federal government to acquire significant powers over the states. What is a nation, and how does it differ from a state? It is easy to confuse the, uh, to confuse the terms nation and state because both are often used to describe a country. A nation, however, describes any large group of people who are united by common bonds, race, language, custom, tradition, and sometimes religion. The Cherokee people are an example of a nation that lives within a state, which is the United States. When the geographic territory of a nation and a state coincide, France, for example, it is sometimes referred to as a nation-state. Historical nation-states, however, are be beginning to change as more people travel and immigrate to other nations. And on the right, you'll see a protest in France uh, from Middle Eastern immigrants, uh, and there are a lot of cultural conflicts, and there's a lot of change going on within the nation-states due to immigration and travel. Okay, so what are the four essential features of the state? One, a state must have a population of people living within its borders. No people, no state. Two, a territory. A state must have established geographic boundaries. Three, sovereignty. A state must have the supreme and absolute authority within its boundaries. And four, government, an institution through which the state maintains social order, provides public services, and enforces decisions that are binding on all people within the state. Okay, population. A state's population affects its stability over time. States that have a population that shares a basic consensus or agreement about political and social beliefs are the most stable. The United States has a stable government because most of our citizens share belief in democracy. Some countries have populations that do not share political or cultural beliefs, and as a result have very unstable governments. States with large populations often have political and economic power over states that have small populations. And a good example to the right is Canada. Canada has a larger landmass than the U.S., but only a fraction of its population, making it less influential in international politics. Territory. A state's territory are its established geographic boundaries. 
The boundaries between states are often the source of political conflict. Territories of a state, the territories of a state grow through purchase, negotiations, and war. The territories of the United States have increased dramatically through these three methods. To the right you will see a picture of the region between India and Pakistan known as Kashmir and the uh, Indian and Pakistan governments have fought for many years over control of that territory so there is a boundary conflict right there. The Louisiana Purchase uh, for instance doubled the size of our country. Sovereignty Okay, the term sovereignty comes from sovereign, which refers to an individual who governs with supreme authority, such as a king or an emperor. Political sovereignty means that a state has absolute authority within its territorial boundaries. It is completely independent. It makes its own laws. And it determines its own foreign policy. Decides on its own internal policies. In theory, states do not have the right to interfere with or violate the sovereignty of other states, that is, forcing another state to buy its manufactured goods, for instance. Every state must have a form of government, whether it is a democracy or a monarchy or what have you. Government is defined as the institution through which a state maintains social order, provides public services, and enforces decisions that are binding on all peoples living within the state. That concludes our discussion. Thanks you for attending, and uh, have a great day. Bye-bye.